Hey guys, this is what I look like today. Um, I am about to take a shower, but I needed to make another batch of my toning shampoo. And so I was like, hey, I might as well show people how I make my toning shampoo. Um, so I'm just gonna like double check that I'm in the right group. There I am. Okay, so. Um, if you're not familiar with toning shampoo, so basically it's like the purple shampoo that maybe um, you've seen in the salon or maybe your grandma uses for her gray hair um, if she has it dyed or her white hair if she has it dyed. So basically when you get your hair colored, um, depending on your hair type, it can really turn like if I, like I get the ends of mine highlighted and um, if you... If I didn't do anything to it and I just used regular shampoo, it would turn into a really orangey color blonde. Um, I don't want to do that. So I want to keep this like cool, sandy, blonde, slash like cool color. And I used to have my hair even blonder and it was like platinum and you keep you keep it like the bright cool color as opposed to the yellow gold color by using toning shampoo. Well, when I started um, like cutting out chemicals, toning shampoo, like traditional shampoo with the um, sodium lauryl sulfate and the fragrance and all that kind of stuff was one of the first things I wanted to cut out. So, um, I needed to make toning shampoo and my kid had thrush when he was born and we used this stuff called gentian violet I, this is probably backwards for you guys i'm going to post the recipe um, i'm going to update with a link to the recipe in a little bit but um i used this for his thrush and it turned his mouth purple it's basically like a purple dye thing this is one of those like home remedies that people tell you about for thrush so i was like hey that's purple, whatever. I started searching and I figured out I could make my own DIY toning shampoo. Now, disclaimer, this is a dye. If you get this directly on your hands, on your carpet, on your clothes, it is going to stain them. Um, once it's mixed with the shampoo and it's watered down, I don't have that issue, but you have to mix it really thoroughly. The first time I did it, I tried actually just dropping it into the bottle and then shaking it and then d dumping it out in my hand. Well, it didn't mix it thoroughly and like it turned my hands purple for a day or two. If you accidentally get a part of your body or your hair purple, it will wash out in a few washes. Like this is not a permanent um, dye as far as like your skin and your hair goes, but it does take a little while to fade out. So. It took me some trial and error. I'm gonna share my recipe with you guys. Um, and it just keeps my hair like a cooler color. Um, so this is the way I do it. I'm gonna go ahead and start doing this while people are... Did I drip purple? Oh no, okay. There's like purple somehow already in my water and I didn't even open the container yet. <laughs> it's deceptive. Okay. So I use the Vanilla Co by Eba shampoo. I find it to be really moisturizing. It's my favorite. That's what my husband uses too, if I can get it open. So first we're gonna do the shampoo. Let's see. Sorry, my kids are in the background being really loud and if it wasn't, if you couldn't hear me, I would holler and be like, be quiet because whatever. So I put it all in here, put it in these big mixing bowls. So I also like to add a little bit of water because I feel like it helps mix up the color within um, the thing. So we're gonna let that drip out for a second. So if you're hopping on here, tell me if you know what toning shampoo is. <laughs> um, I did not know about this and I kept like getting my hair color and I'd be like, why does my hair look orangey? Like why can it not stay this cool color that you always see in the magazines? <laughs> And people kept telling me, like the hairstylists kept telling me about toning shampoo, and I was just sort of like, they just want me to buy their shampoo. Um, but it, no, it like legitimately works. Okay, I'm opening the dye. So um, it comes, this is the way I got it. I got mine off Amazon. Sometimes you can find it in store. 
I use these pipettes. They come with some of my rollers. You will find the amount of color that works for you. Um, so I have a specific amount I've tested. It's in my recipe. I will share it later. Um, I have a specific amount that I have tested and find that I like. And so start small. If you have lighter color hair, you're going to need less. See how it's like turning this purple? Um, so I can remember using my grandma's purple shampoo. She had, she dyed her hair white. And obviously if you dye your hair white, um, like it's, you don't want it to be yellow. So the lighter your hair, the less of this d pigment that you need. So I find sometimes when I have my hair darker like this, I actually need more pigment than when it's like super blonde. Um, so I'm going to, you're going to stir this up. So while we're, while that's going, I have this like miniature whisk that my mother-in-law gave to me and this is the best tool for this, but you can also just use a fork. Um, so this conditioner is really thick. So I actually have to add quite a bit of water to this one to get like it mixed in there really well. Um, we're going to like, for time's sake, I will probably not get all of this in there. Um, so the purpose of adding this dye in here is just to keep your hair not yellowy blonde. I also add, well, let's see. I also add wintergreen to mine because wintergreen is really good for um, like hair shedding. So I add that in and I add quite a bit. So I add a little bit to my shampoo, but I add more to my conditioner because I usually let my conditioner sit in a while. Um, and this recipe is in, is I'm going to share it on my blog. So other people add different ones. So if you have um, a flaky scalp, you might decide to add Melrose or you might decide to add um, rosemary or if you want to really support hair growth you might decide to add our mermaid mix which is cedarwood rosemary and lavender and wintergreen um, so I didn't actually know about wintergreen until I heard from Jennifer O'Donnell who shared that wintergreen is what she uses and had a lot of success okay so I'm not going to try and get this all out right now because otherwise you guys would be waiting on me for a little while. Usually what I do is I add a little bit of water to this, I shake it up, and then I pour the rest of it out. It's just like, get it out. I'm taking a shower after this, by the way. If you weren't here for the beginning of the video, that's why I look like this because I'm about to get in the shower and I needed some more of my toning shampoo and conditioner. So I also add it to my conditioner. All right, so if you want to actually like tint your hair purple, you can. I've made like a separate batch, like a small one-time use batch where I made it really strong, like a lot more of the dye. And you can actually tint your hair using that method. So I'm just like telling you guys, it's totally doable. Um, again, it's not a permanent color, it's temporary. Like it'll wash out in a few washes. Um, like it'll start to fade out. Um, doesn't this look so cool? I feel like a mad scientist when I do this. It's like, it's very satisfying to see the purple blend into the stuff. So this, as I mentioned, this will, sorry, Harvey's coming in. This will stain fabric when, especially when it's in this mixing process like this. Once it's blended in, I don't have any issues. Like I've never stained any rags. Like in the shower or anything like that. Um, Harvey, you wanna be in the picture? Okay. Hello. Hello. Oh, you're gonna mix that up, aren't you? Let's move this out of the way. You can help me mix this. So it's gentian violet. I get it on Amazon and I'm gonna share the link to the recipe and I actually think I have a link to Amazon for the ones I purchased on Amazon. Um, but see how it's mixing in? So when I get in the shower, I do my shampoo, I let my shampoo soak a little bit. Then I do my conditioner and I let it soak. Now if my hair is like 
I feel like maybe I went out of town and I didn't take my shampoo with me. And I feel like it's really, um, oh, thank you, Harvey. And I feel like it's really starting to get yellow and I need like a high concentration. I will actually do a dry mask. Like I will put the shampoo on my hair dry, focusing on the area that really needs the, um, the color. So like right now I've got ombre, so my blonde is on the ends. And so that's where I would put it, is mainly on the ends. I put the shampoo there and let it soak. Um, because once it's dry, it really soaks up that color. Harvey, you put dye on my... Ah! Oh my gosh, Harvey just opened the purple dye. <laughs> on the video. Okay, okay, guys, I'm going to have to go because this is like, we are going to be stained. Um... Remember, don't be like me. Be super careful with your dye. Um, but anyways, let the, sh let the conditioner sit on your scalp and then you'll rinse it out and all that kind of stuff. So yes, welcome to my life. <laughs> I'm gonna go wash Harvey off and take a shower and wash my hair. So I will talk to you guys later, bye.